This is WBCQ, bringing world's last chance radio to you from Monticello, Maine, USA. Violent crime, political unrest, financial instability. Everything points to an impending crisis, a crisis like no other. Tune in to World's Last Chance Radio to learn how you can spiritually prepare for what lies ahead. WLC Radio, preparing a people for the Saviour's imminent return. Yahweh is one. Yahushua, the Christ, is his only begotten human son. Contrary to popular belief, Scripture does not teach that Christ is the Creator, that the Father and the Son are the same being, or that Yahushua existed prior to his birth in Bethlehem. Sadly, many beautiful and beloved brothers and sisters in the faith today have been deceived by tradition, and have allowed the erroneous doctrine of a pre-incarnate Christ to cloud their understanding of Scripture. In this video, we will ask some very important questions pertaining to this teaching. Questions that Trinitarians and Binitarians simply cannot answer without contradicting Scripture. It is our hope that, as you prayerfully contemplate these questions, you will lay aside all assumptions, preconceived ideas and cherished traditions. It is our humble admonition that you will allow the Bible alone to shape your understanding and frame your conclusions. Let's begin. Question 1. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, how can the Father be beyond temptation while the Son is not? Scripture says plainly that Yahweh cannot be tempted. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by Yahweh, for Yahweh cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Scripture is equally clear that Yahushua was tempted, and he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Therefore in all things he, Yahushua, had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Yahweh, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Question 2. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, how can the Father know the timing of Yahushua's return while Yahushua himself does not? Isn't it nonsensical to suggest that the Father is keeping secrets from himself? But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Question 3. Yahweh is immortal and cannot die. Yahushua, however, died. He willingly laid down his life for you and me. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, how is this possible? Yahweh is immortal. I urge you in the sight of Yahweh who gives life to all things, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honour and everlasting power. Amen. Yahushua, however, died. And Yahushua cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. But Yahweh demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. To suggest that the Father and Son are, in actuality, one being, makes a mockery of the crucifixion and reduces it to a charade. Clinging to the ideology that Yahushua is Yahweh demands that you also believe Yahushua only feigned death because he was still alive in heaven. 
Please pause for a moment to think about the ramifications of such a doctrine. This is irrefutably a denial of the gospel message. Question 4. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, why does Yahushua say that Yahweh created mankind? Why did he not say that he created mankind? And Yahushua answered and said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, Yahweh made them male and female. This was a remarkable opportunity for Yahushua to let everyone know that he was the creator if he wished to do so. He doesn't, though. He never made such a claim. Question 5. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, why does Yahushua continually refer to his Father as a separate being? Now if Yahuwah so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? And shall Yahuwah not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Question 6. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, why does Yahushua repeatedly refer to Yahuwah as his God? Does Yahuwah have a God? And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yahushua said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. It is critical to note that Yahushua not only refers to Yahuwah as his God, but emphasizes that Yahuwah is the only true God, separate and distinct from himself. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Yahushua the Christ, whom you have sent. Question 7. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, why does Yahushua pray to the Father? Is he praying to himself? At that time Yahushua answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent, and have revealed them to babes. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Question 8. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, why does Scripture distinctly say that it is Yahushua that will judge humanity and not the Father? How can the same entity both judge and not judge at the same time? For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. Truly, these times of ignorance Yahuwah overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Question 9. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, why does Yahushua repeatedly refer to Yahuwah as his Father? Is Yahushua his own Father? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my Father bestowed one upon me. But Yahushua answered them, My Father has been working until now, and I have been working. Question 10. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, why does Yahushua repeatedly refer to himself as the son of Yahuwah? Is Yahuwah his own son? For Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For Yahuwah did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahuwah. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yahushua answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Did you get that? Peter declared Yahushua to be the Son of the living God. He did not say that Yahushua is the living God. The question naturally arises then, how and when did Yahushua become the Son of Yahuwah? Scripture answers this question in plain language. Listen to Gabriel's explanation to Mary. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of Yahuwah. Yahushua became the son of Yahuwah when he was conceived in Mary's womb through the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Yahuwah's immutable word, conceived in the virgin's womb, literally became flesh. It was this miraculous event that the psalmist prophesied about almost 1,000 years earlier. Yahushua, the promised Messiah, the descendant of David and heir to the throne, was to be literally begotten at a finite point in time. I will declare the decree. Yahuwah has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Scripture does not teach that Yahushua pre-existed in heaven before condescending to become a human fetus. This is a human invention which cannot be substantiated by the Bible. Many, in recognizing that Scripture makes a clear distinction between the Father and the Son, admit they are separate beings but still cling to the idea that Yahushua is the co-creator and pre-existed in heaven prior to his birth in Bethlehem. Such a notion, though, presents us with a clear contradiction. Yahuwah is one and he alone is the Creator and the only true God. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Thus says Yahuwah your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb, I am Yahuwah, who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. The denial of this plainly stated truth is largely responsible for the rejection of the gospel by both Jews and Muslims. Yahuwah is one. He alone is God. He alone is the Creator. The erroneous doctrine of Trinitarians and Binitarians immediately repulses sincere Jews and Muslims because both know that God is one. Consequently, their ears are closed to the life-giving truth as it is in Yahushua, and they are unable to comprehend the glorious gospel of Yahuwah's grace and mercy. To be fair, there are many verses that on the surface appear to support the teaching of a pre-incarnate Christ. We must bear in mind, though, that the Bible's translators were not unbiased in their work. They were fallible human beings like you and me, with preconceived notions and inherited traditions, and intentionally or not, their bias shows up in their translations. A prayerful investigation into these supposed proof texts makes clear the fallacy of the Trinitarian and Binitarian doctrines. Much more could be said. But it is our prayer that you, as an honest Bible student and sincere seeker of truth, will prayerfully investigate these things on your own. Time is short, friends. The blasting of the seven trumpets is imminent, and the end of this age is at hand. Yahushua, the man whom Yahuwah has ordained to judge the world, will soon return in the clouds of glory to establish Yahuwah's everlasting kingdom upon the earth. Don't be found worshipping at the altar of complacency and tradition when he returns. Tear down at once the unbiblical and idolatrous Trinitarian Binitarian doctrine and make your stand on the Bible alone. 
Choose today whom you will serve. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Yahushua. Praise Yahuwah's matchless name now and forever. Amen. For more on this important subject, please visit worldslastchance.com, click on the Content Directory button at the top of the page, and refer to the Trinity Doctrinal Error. You are listening to World's Last Chance Radio on WBCQ at 9330 kHz on the 31 meter band. World's Last Chance Radio, preparing a people for the Saviour's soon return. Do you have a best friend? What do you like about him? What first drew you to her? Was it mutual interests? A shared sense of humour? It's easy to think of other humans as friends, but what about the Creator? He's actually the best friend you will ever have. Every positive trait, every friendly personality characteristic that makes a person a good friend is found in the Father. Satan knows that whenever a person gets to know the Father on an individual basis, love always follows. So he's very effectively gotten people to fear the very one who loves them most. To get to know the beautiful character of your Maker, look for the video, Hyawa is the best friend you will ever have, on worldslastchance.com. You can also watch it on YouTube. This is Jane Lamb with your daily promise from Yah's Word. Hebrews 11 has long been called the Faith Hall of Fame chapter. If the book of Hebrews were to be given a modern epilogue, Anne and Adiram Judson would surely be listed in the updated Faith Hall of Fame. The Judsons were among the first Christian missionaries to take the Gospel to Burma. It was an extremely difficult mission field. They had been warned that the Buddhists of Burma were impermeable to the gospel message. Part of what made conversions so difficult was a law that decreed converting to another religion was a crime punishable by death. The Judson faith warriors did not let that discourage them. They spent their first three years in Burma immersing themselves in the local language. Anne translated the books of Daniel and Jonah into Burmese, while Adoniram translated the rest of scripture into Burmese. Anne also became the first Protestant to translate any part of the Bible into Thai when she translated the Gospel of Matthew in 1819. The Judsons were wholly committed to living for Yah while sharing truth with those around them. In 1824, war came to Burma. As an English-speaking American, Judson was suspected of spying for Burma's enemy, Great Britain. He was arrested and thrown into a death prison. While there, Adoniram, another missionary and other Westerners, were starved and underwent horrible torture. Of the British prisoners of war interred with them, only one survived. Meanwhile, 
Anne was left alone as the only Western woman in a country at war with Great Britain. Sick and nursing a newborn infant Adoniram had never even seen, she tirelessly provided food and mats for the prisoners, as well as visited one governmental official after another, seeking her husband's release. It was a time of extreme danger, with untold suffering. One day, a fellow prisoner turned to Adoniram and, with a sneer on his face, asked, Dr Judson, what about the prospect of the conversion of the heathen? Adoniram's immediate reply was, The prospects are just as bright as the promises of Yah. You see, the Judsons trusted the promises of Yah. Like Paul, they could say, I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Psalm 22 verse 24 tells us, He hath not despised, nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. No matter what your difficulties are, Yahweh is right by your side to guide, protect, strengthen and defend. Psalm 55 verse 22 invites us, Cast thy burden upon Yahweh, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. We have been given great and precious promises. Go and start claiming! You are listening to World's Last Chance Radio on WBCQ at 9330 kHz on the 31 meter band. World's Last Chance Radio, preparing a people for the Saviour's soon return. Thank you for listening to this episode on WLC Radio. We're living in very solemn times. The world is hovering on the brink of disaster. Catastrophic events will soon take place that will bring this age to a close and usher in the next. In His great mercy, Yahuwah has revealed through prophecy what the future holds. Revelation 8 foretells a series of events, each one worse than the last, that will devastate the earth. The world's food supplies will be decimated. Famine and its accompanying pestilence will result. The Earth's fresh water supplies will also be affected. Revelation 9 reveals that demons will impersonate extraterrestrials. The terror and devastation of this so-called alien invasion will make people desperate for safety at any cost. The freedom to live and worship as the conscience dictates will become a thing of the past. Many lives will be lost during this series of events, and when the mark of the beast is enforced, there will be martyrs. Each event prepares for the next crisis. In one long last call of mercy to repent, for Yahuwah is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Shortly following the events described in Revelation 8 and 9, the seven last plagues will be poured out. These plagues are unprecedented in human history. In a very real sense, these events will empty the earth. Isaiah 24 warns, quote, Behold, Yahuwah maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, 
and it shall fall and not rise again. Unquote. For believers, however, there is hope. In describing the end of this age, Yahushua said in Luke 21 verse 28, quote, When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Unquote. Yes, the end will be traumatic. It's meant to be. Yahuwah wants to save every individual he can, so he allows this final climax to awaken souls. But the gospel of the kingdom of Yah is that, beyond the traumatic events of the near future, an eternity of bliss awaits all who accept Yah's gift of salvation. When Yahushua returns, all who've died trusting in the merits of the crucified and risen Savior will be raised back to life in the first resurrection. Yahushua will then set up Yah's kingdom on earth. He and the redeemed will reign jointly on the earth for the first thousand years of eternity. Since the cataclysmic events preceding Yahushua's return will render the earth uninhabitable, Yahuwah will then recreate a whole new world. John saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. If you wish to join with the redeemed of all ages, living a life that measures with the life of Yahuwah, make the choice. Accept salvation today. You don't have to get yourself ready. The truth is, you can't. Neither can I. No one can. Come to Him just as you are. Don't wait until you've quit sinning. You're not going to get better through your own efforts. Accept Yahuwah's invitation to become a member of His eternal earthly kingdom. When you accept this precious invitation, Yahuwah will gift you with a brand new heart. In Ezekiel 36, verse 26, he declares, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Accepting this priceless gift is the only way for joining his kingdom. Come to Yahuwah just as you are. He's waiting with arms wide open, eager to receive all who come to him. been listening to WLC Radio. Join us again tomorrow for another truth-filled message on WBCQ at 93.30 kilohertz on the 31 meter band. World's Last Chance Radio, preparing a people for the Saviour's soon return. <laughs>